Hello, this is Jennifer Schau coming to you live from Washington, D.C., and we are in week 10 of our government contracting webinar series. This is the final week in this particular series. Uh, you can find all of the webinars on our website under the webinar section. All of the previous week's webinars, as well as ones that we've done over the last four or five years, are also listed within that section. They are segmented by subject matter or topic below the schedule, which uh, will be this week. Today we are covering GSA schedule qualifications. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we'll get into the particular sections of the GSA schedule proposal, the administrative, the technical, and the pricing. And Friday we've got a double header which will cover sole source contracts for all of the set aside. So sole source contracts for 8As, women owned, veteran owned, and hub zone, and there are some great advantages within each of those set aside. So highly encourage you to sign up for those webinars. Again, they are all complimentary. Uh, they are short and sweet, and they are all recorded and will be available usually the same day, a couple hours after the webinar for download on our website. A little bit about us, uh, based in downtown DC, and provide a variety of services for contractors, both product and service companies, small businesses, mid-size and large prime contractors. Services uh, range from anything uh, including market analysis reports, capability statements, proposal writing, business development, 8A certification, compliance, and GSA schedule assistance. We do host networking events, seminars, and obviously webinars throughout the year. All of those are listed on our website. It is current. You can also sign up for our newsletter, which will um, keep you abreast of the events and seminars throughout the year. That's usually sent out every Monday morning at 1030 Eastern time. Uh, my background is on this slide, uh, but more importantly, I'd rather get into our topic today, which is the GSA Schedule Qualification Checklist. This will be a good primer for those companies that are interested in perhaps pursuing the schedule or maybe looking at getting a second schedule. So first of all, what is a GSA Schedule? GSA is the General Services Administration, uh, and they administer the schedule. So. It is a marketing tool only, and it's certainly not required to sell to the government. GSA just does a heck of a job marketing themselves and the schedule program. So many people think that it is something that's required or uh, that it's the hottest game in town. Um, it is not. Uh, it is, again, one of many mechanisms that the government uses to purchase from companies. It's really only used about 10 to 12% of the time in government purchases. There's multiple other contract vehicles, and many agencies also have their own contract vehicle. Um, it is a five-year initial contract, so if you pursue the schedule and you are awarded it, your schedule is good for five years as long as you meet the terms and conditions. At the end of the five years, there is a renewal period that you go through, and there are three of those. So from start to finish, uh, it becomes a 20-year contract if you go through each of the five-year uh, renewable periods. It's considered a multiple award schedule, meaning there are multiple vendors on this schedule, uh, and it's considered a federal supply schedule. Most of the, uh, the big impetus of the schedule is that GSA is securing your lowest prices. And this is very important. Obviously, with lower pricing, uh, you're going to have lower margins. And with lower margins, you want heavy volume. Um, so just keep that in mind before you decide to pursue the schedule. Some of the benefits or advantages, it's going to make it easier for the government to purchase from you. You've been vetted up front. Your pricing has been negotiated. The government knows what they're getting from you. Um, and it will also give you access to um, sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes multiple times a day, but you'll have special um, RFP and RFQ opportunities. Those will come to you through GSA eBuy, and those are set aside just for the schedule holders. Um, having the schedule also shows the government, uh, as well as potential partners, including prime uh, vendors, that you are serious about doing business with the government. And there's a limited group of companies on the schedule. Limited, I guess, should be in quotes, because there's about 20,000 vendors that do hold a GSA schedule. 
Um, some of the requirements that, again, you want to consider before you decide to pursue this uh, contract vehicle is, are you meeting both, both the upfront uh, requirements to get on? And then once you're on the schedule, are you well positioned to meet everything that GSA requires from you, meaning the terms and conditions of the schedule? So uh, I put together just a short litmus test here. Um, and number two and three, I think, are very important, more so perhaps than just the upfront requirements. Do your customers even use the schedule? Uh, or are you going in with the mentality of build it and they will come? That hasn't worked out for a lot of the vendors. As I mentioned, there's about 20,000 companies on the schedule. 63% have zero sales. So more than half of the companies on the schedule are not meeting the $25,000 per year sales quota requirements. So this means that you need to have $25,000 worth of sales through your schedule. If you don't, GSA will cancel or revoke your schedule. So again, make sure in advance of pursuing this that you do have customers that specifically want to purchase from you through the schedule. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, 99% uh, of the schedule is really based on GSA securing your lowest rates for the products and or services that you're providing. So are your rates competitive with the other companies already on the schedule? Uh, what are your margins going to be? And as I mentioned on the previous slide, you do need heavier volume with these lower margins. Uh, again, GSA schedule is one of the many ways that the government purchases. This was in the, taken from a market analysis report that we did for a customer earlier this year uh, as they were deciding to potentially pursue the schedule. So uh, we looked at the, all of the agencies uh, that were purchasing their services and uh, we sectioned out uh, how the government purchased those services. Uh, the majority went to full and open competition. There were some set-aside contracts. Simplified acquisition came in at second. And GSA schedules came in at the uh, at the bottom there at 5.5%. Still going to be millions of dollars. Uh, however, again, GSA schedule is not the only game in town. So the, let's dig into the actual qualification checklist, which is our, our main topic for today. Uh, there's three uh, sections to the GSA proposal, the admin, the technical, and the pricing. In the administrative uh, section, you want to make sure that you have two full years, 24 solid months of revenue. Uh, this will be shown on your balance sheet and income statement. Preferably, your company is not showing any losses. Uh, you should be a profitable company uh, as you decide to pursue the schedule. Additionally, you should have full-time employees. Within this administrative uh, section, there are additional requirements. Some of these are GSA tests that are available uh, on the GSA website that you will need to download and take. As I mentioned, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week, we'll be going through each of these sections in more detail, uh, but this is simply just do you qualify up front? And missing any parts of any of these sections would potentially uh, result in your company being rejected once you submit that proposal. So the technical section, which is the second one, uh, you'll have to have your customers, uh, a minimum of six, fill out a customer survey. Uh, it's an anonymous survey, but you want to make sure that your customers are happy and that you have at least six customers. Um, for those companies that are selling professional services, you'll need two projects that relate to the special item number or that SIN number that identifies the services that you are offering to the government. If you're providing IT services, you'll need three current projects. And they, GSA defines current as projects within the last two years, but specifically down to the month. So if you are submitting your proposal to GSA, let's say next month, November of 2017, your projects cannot have expired uh, or ended before November of 2015. Uh, even if it's uh, October 31st, uh, that would be considered um, not uh, acceptable by GSA. So again, make sure that you do meet those uh, proposal requirements. We'll be talking about this in more detail again later this week. The pricing section, which is the third section, uh, you'll need to submit your commercial price list uh, and or market rates for the services that you're providing. 
Um, you'll need invoice justification to show that you have billed these products uh, or, serve, or billed for the services in the past. You also need to show that your pricing is fair and reasonable, uh, and those are GSA words, fair and reasonable, uh, as well as competitive. The way that GSA uh, and you should do in advance to, uh, to determine if your rates are fair and reasonable and competitive is, number one, you will disclose to GSA who, which of your customers uh, are receiving the best discounts for your prices, whether it's a category of customers, meaning all state and local, all nonprofits, all educational institutions, uh, or a actual company name. So ABC company always gets a 15% discount from us. So you will need to disclose to GSA again who of your customers is getting the best prices or rates for your services or products. The second part of the test is GSA will look at and ensure that your rates are competitive with other companies on the schedule. Uh, so again, you should do this before you decide to pursue the schedule. Uh, if you're selling uh, project managers at $100 an hour and everybody else on the schedule uh, has project managers at $89 an hour, GSA is going to scratch their head and say, well, why should we let you on the schedule at $100 per hour when we can get the same exact education requirements, experience requirements, and a lower rate from uh, 300 other companies? The way you can do that is by going to the GSA site, uh, which is pretty handy, called calc.gsa.gov. Uh, and this will allow you to plug in a, uh, a job title, which I did here um, a couple weeks ago, project manager. The education level that we selected was bachelor's degree. Uh, on the right-hand side, you have a menu there that will uh, allow you to further uh, narrow down your search, whether it's on-site, off-site small businesses, and also select the SIN and schedule. This will help you determine if your rates are in sync with others on the schedule um, and should help make that decision of getting onto the schedule or not um, kind of a go or no go for your company. Some other suggested uh, thoughts here are that you should have a sales rep uh, who's out there actively and currently selling for you. Uh, from day one, a human body that understands the federal market, that understands your offering, whether it's a product or service, and that understands how the GSA schedule works. Uh, additionally, I did want to mention on the pricing piece that your GSA schedule rates are only a price ceiling. So once you are on the schedule, you will potentially start bidding for work through your schedule at rates lower than your GSA schedule rate. Uh, your accounting system will need to decipher between your GSA schedule sales versus your non-GSA schedule sales. And this is because GSA will conduct what they call a customer assisted visit or a CAV, C-A-V, again, customer assisted visit, uh, one sometimes twice within every five year period. Sometimes those are on site. More frequently, these are taking place um, online and over the phone. You'll have compliance issues to deal with modifications that will come both from GSA as they update the terms and conditions of the solicitation, as well as internal modifications that your company may make or wants to make to the schedule to add products, add services, decrease prices, increase prices, change your business size, change your location, change your set-aside status. Uh, you will also have the renewals, which again occur at the end of every five-year period. Uh, you'll go through three of those at the end of the 20 years of being on the schedule. Uh, unlike the 8A program, you can actually apply to get back onto the schedule. So I would suggest at least two human bodies, one for the sales, one for the accounting and compliance. Um, and these are something, these are services that we can also help you with. This chart uh, is a little bit busy, but it uh, is meant to display kind of a timeline at where and when you should perhaps consider, in my opinion, uh, pulling the trigger on the GSA schedule. So if we work left to right, you've got the sales rep out there knocking on the doors, responding to RFPs, writing proposals, and hopefully winning some contracts. As your company starts to win contracts, your revenue is growing, you start hiring more full-time staff, you're still pursuing the sales, knocking on the doors, winning contracts, you've got some revenue under your belt, 
you understand how to play the federal government contracting game. At that point, perhaps you pull the trigger on the GSA schedule, but yet you'll still need to consider the, the sales reps knocking on the door. And even with the GSA schedule, you will still need to write and respond to RFPs. So this, the schedule does not eliminate that need. Um, unfortunately, we see a lot of times uh, companies pulling the GSA schedule trigger uh, too early in the process, uh, and they end up as one of the 63% of the companies that have zero sales, and then GSA will revoke or cancel their schedule. You can certainly apply to get back on the next day, uh, but why waste the time, effort, and money to box yourself in uh, into a contract vehicle that your company may or may not need? So in conclusion, uh, I'd like to say that just because you meet the qualifications doesn't equal uh, uh, a check mark to say, go ahead and pursue the schedule. I think you should make a business case uh, based on facts, on how your customer purchases, uh, on your pricing versus other companies on the schedule, uh, and make sure that the GSA schedule will be an asset for your firm versus a liability. Uh, should you need any help with the schedule, uh, the proposal, audits, modifications, renewals, uh, sales assistance, compliance, and reporting, that is something that we can certainly help you with. Contact information is here. Tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday, we will go into more detail into the administrative, the technical, and the pricing sections. And again, Friday, we will cover sole source contracts for all of the set-aside programs. Thanks again for joining us today and hope you'll join us the rest of this week as we finish our 2017 government contracting series.